Thank you very, very much for the introduction and uh, thank you also for giving me the opportunity to talk. So, yes, sir. You can, yeah, it's of course, you can use your mouth if you like. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the privilege of the speaker. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I thank again for the opportunity to talk here and uh, and uh, so somehow I'm misunderstanding the purpose of this conference workshop. So my talk is not right, perfectly directly to each principle, but some. Uh, so I, I'm going to construct Lefschetz vibration on a very specific family of spaces. But uh, so it, it, it's really specific construction. So. It is not, but I want to generalize it in more general case. And then we need some H principle type theorems, but uh, that is what I don't know still. But anyway, uh, I'm going to construct some uh, reference vibration on some spaces. And uh, I'd like to discuss about the consequences of the construction. So this is a joint work with this, this assumption that it's the same every time, everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it doesn't come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's coming soon. So here yeah, are three guys with whom I collaborated on this subject. So, oh, so I, I introduced them. So one is, and the first one is uh, Naohiko Kasuya, and the second in the middle is Hiroki Kodama, and uh, the third one, third guy is Mori Atsuhide Mori. So, so let's start. And uh, the green one is, the main term today. So I'm going to construct a versus uh, vibration uh, with regular fiber across torus on uh, on the mirror fibers of cast singularities, and it also works for uh, so-called simple elliptic singularities, and. Uh, I'm going, uh, I will explain the, these objects later, but uh, so first I, I, I introduce some applications. So for example, if we, if we take so-called T237 T3, T3, singularity, so it's one of the cusp singularity, the most important one. And uh, so the, the singular surface is like, like, like this. Here's the singularity. And then the link of the singularity is a uh, solid man free manifold. So it's a torus bundle over, over the circle with the hyperbolic monodon. And uh, in the case of, for example, this, this Singularity. So that if you take the monodromy of the, this link, this is two one one one, and uh, it happens that this is conjugate to its inverse in SL two C. Not GL, not not only in GL two C, but in SL two C. That means. Uh, if you compare the orientation of the base circle, so you get the inverse as a mono, as the monodromy, but without changing the the orientation of the four manifold, just cha changing the orientation of the boundary, they coincide as an oriented three manifold. <clears throat> that means you can glue them together to get close object. And then afterwards, 
we 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 can replace this single surface with its millionaire fi fiber. So it's it's a smoothing of the singularity. So as a result, we so, have a closed. So this, this is like convex surface and convex energy, right? You get. Uh, that's the point. That's my point. But uh, since ten years ago, I, I, I proved that uh, there there is we can modify the symplectic structure into not the convex one, but uh, periodic one, uh, translation invariant one. So even as a not only not only as a uh, smooth manifold. As a symplectic manifold, we, we get a closed four manifold in this way. That's a symplectic, not folded. No, not folded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the symplectic. All the symplectic. No, no, symplectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's, it's really a symplectic, closed close symplectic manifold. And yeah, so I have a question that how is this manifold? It's a cross simply manifold, simply connected, and the order number is 24. So it must be carefully. And but uh, I asked a uh, specialist of, a to of the topology of elliptic surfaces, and he computed the uh, cohomology ring, and it co coincides with, with uh, that of carefully. So we, we can assure that it's at least it's a, a kind of uh, autopic carefully surface. I mean, uh, some form manifold, which is at least homo homeomorphic, but we don't know if it is really smooth, uh, diffeomorphic to the real carefully. But uh, now I, we are going to introduce uh, this is vibration. And uh, this mean fiber has been received vibration with closed fibers. And uh, so the left shift vibrations, two left shift vibrations, one is here and one is over there, they coincide along the boundary. So this cross four manifold that needs a received vibration also. To the to the to the two sphere, and then immediately it implies this is really a smooth cavity. That is one consequence of the. And, and, and if you just take a projectivization of the singularity, so what the complement is the kind of yeah. The, 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 from algebraic geometry context, it is possible, but then. So for 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 certain pair of singularities, so I will I will talk about later, but uh, it is possible. And uh, so we get we have carefully surface. But uh, after the deformation, we don't know. So just before the deformation, we can see some some kind of vibration. So before so so there is some uh, complex surface of the class seven, so it's not Kera, so it, it, it is called the Inoue Hipster Roof surface. So, so if we, we do two singular surfaces, we get such such object. And in fact, we can deform it in special cases. And we get, we really get real K3. In the complex sense, but then we use the vibration, and uh, if we so, it's a just it's a K three, and uh, it doesn't say clearly that uh, the K three surface is decomposed into two two pieces like this. So it's just uh, the, the algebraic geometry really deforms it into K3 surface, but uh, just as a, as a ring, we can deform it. So, so now we, we know that this is really a 
ケースに差し挟んで、トポロジカリー、そのトポロジカリー、イリーズ、デコンポスト、イントゥ、2ピーシーズ、オフ、トゥ、トゥ、トゥ、ミューナーファイバス。So, so is, is the Lachia's vibration holomorphic? No, no, no. <laughs> After all, that, that, that is a subtle point that I don't know exactly. So, After having K3 surface, and、uh, if, if you look for special complex structure on K3, it might be possible, but I don't know. But a priori, if you look at the mirror fiber, it, it, it's, a, it's a Stein surface. So, holomorphic procedure does not give you relationship fibration with closed fiber. So that's the whole point. Of <laughs> so, so, so that is one way. So, so if you have a Stein surface, then look at some holomorphic functions. They usually give s you a delicious vibration, but always the fiber is not closed with boundary. But what I do here is. To construct a lattice fiber relation with closed fibers. So, my hope is that、uh, after change, really, really changing or looking for some complex, special complex structure on K3 surface, it might be also interpreted that for that complex structure, the lattice fiber relation is really. And、uh, really a homomorphic one. But, but, and, I think it, it is really true. But in that case,、uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we use the implication, holomorphic implication of m i l n a r fiber. So, so, for example, i show you one more example. So, if you take、uh, singularity, So, if, if you take this polynomial, k a r t i c polynomial, so it gives you 444 singularity, and you can do the same thing. And also, this is a, a kind of self dual pair. So, then you get also K3 surface. But、uh, also, you can、uh, homogenize this. Polynomial into four variables like this. So if you consider the minimal fiber, so you replace this zero,、oh, I'm sorry, with, with one, for example, one or minus one. And then if you homogenize the equation, so you get this equation on CP3. So in CP3, this quadratic. Equation gives you a K3 surface. Okay. Then, if you look at the, this、uh, section,、uh, hyperplane section, and、uh, so you, you have some non trivial topology for this part, but、uh, it is a Milner fiber. Of this singularity. So if you replace this zero with minus one, then this is a, some part of this、uh, quadratic surface in CP3 because the minus one comes to this W to the fourth term, and this is converted to this one. Okay. So, but the end is really different. So, so we have some non, -topolo non, non trivial topology around here, and here is our m i l l i o n fiber. But、uh, so, from this picture, it's really difficult to find another m i l l i o n fiber of the same type. <clears throat> but what I claim is that the m i l l i o n Prepared the, the same copy of the Milner fiber 
this singularity and the two copies glued together to be a K3 surface. So from this equation, it's really hard to see there are two, <laughs> there is two copies of this linear fiber. One is easily to find, but the other one is, so this is really topological right? It's not, it's not polymorphic construction. Okay. And the second application is that, uh, so I don't want to get into this, this topic so much today, but uh, <laughs> so the motivation comes from, uh, apparently from uh, the construction of a co-dimension one foliation with leaf-wise symplectic structures. In other words, a uh, person structure whose symplectic leaves are smooth one on S5. <clears throat> and uh, it is constructed, it was constructed from the same type of singularities and taken Milna vibration and look at the Milna open book. And then we can tabularize these pages and the tubular neighborhood of the link. And then we get a uh, nice foliation which admits Levi symplectic structures. And my interesting thing is that the first one was found ten, already 10 years ago. But uh, now 10 years passed, but still there are no other examples found. And uh, it, it's really difficult to, so we have a compact leaf. So, for example, we can think on the compact leaf into a bunch of leaves or we can introduce some holonomy between them. That kind of modification is possible. And, but uh, if we use Gaia's H principle to destroy compact leaves, then it's hard to understand if it really carries symplectic structures again. So, a compact leaf is one obstruction to, for example, if you really want to have a global symplectic structure, symplectic two for, I mean, if the question is like this, so I constructed a symplectic foliation on S5, but it, it's simply connected and it has no second homology, cohomology. So the question is, if there is such foliation whose symplectic structure is defined by a global, I mean a closed two form on the manifold. For that, apparently compact leaf is, a, is an abstraction. So you, you can integrate the symplectic structure, the, the, the square of the symplectic structure on that compact on the compact leaf, and we got positive number, but uh, we have no fourth homo cohomology or homology. <laughs> so so anyway, and uh, so that is one question. But uh, anyway, the, we don't know any other examples already, even though ten years passed. So. But uh, anyway, uh, four year, that was four years ago, and uh, but the Fran Presas proposed that uh, instead of looking for uh, new examples, let's look for a new proof. And uh, he, what he suggests is to introduce the uh, four so eating left shift vibration. And uh, at that moment, I, I, I immediately said, ah, it's impossible. <laughs> it, is, it was possible, so we, we have that. So uh, I really thank to Frank Presas for introducing the, this notion. <laughs> so with, with the notion of for it, the left shift fiber, it, 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 it is just the left shift fiber, refine the left shift fiber to another, to uh, two dimension foliation on three manifold. And the singular locus is transverse to the leaves. So it's a close one manifold. And then we can apply the, uh, 
gauntlet theorem to this structure, but in a parametric way. But anyway, in that way, we can give a proof of the existence of different symplectic structure on such foliations. So that, that is a motivation and uh, a, a corollary of the construct, our construction. The foliations uh, associated to PTR singularities, I call it, I call them Rosen type foliations. But those foliations are admit a leftist fibration, B5 leftist, oh, I'm sorry, foliated leftist fibration over the standard web component, web foliation on L3. The web foliation is uh, something like this. Uh, so you have a solid torus, and the solid torus is foliated like this, and boundary to torus is a compact leaf. And you prepare two copies of them, and then if you paste them, and you get three minus uh, F3, and that, that's, that's the red, red foliation. So the loss of type foliation on the uh, on S5 for these singularities are admits the fifth vibration over uh, this red foliation. This, this is one application and uh, one big motivation. Yeah, but I have already talked about so much about the uh, you know, fibers and cusp synthesis, but uh, let me quickly uh, review what, what, what are they. So the, if you have, uh, for example, uh, some polynomial in three, three complex variables, so G, and uh, then if it has uh, <clears throat> an isolated, isolated critical point at the, at the origin, then the Milner fiber is, uh, so, so this white one is the singular surface determined by this polynomial. And then if you take a small value, not zero, but small value, and take the inverse image and uh, you take the intersection with the small small disk, then what you get is the minimal fiber. And uh, usually we keep, uh, we keep the absolute value of this epsilon and changes its argument. Then you have a S1 family of minimal fibers. And that's a minimal vibration. And if you collect them and just assign the, the argument, then uh, this space is uh, diffeomorphic to the, the sphere minus the link. That's the minimal vibration. And uh, we are interested in the Singularities of this type. So x to the c then plus y to the q plus g z to the r plus this term. This is really important. And uh, if the, the sum of the inverses of the exponent is <coughs> equal to one, it they belong to the so-called simple elliptic singularities. And if it is really smaller than one, then the singularity is called cusp singularity. So if, if the sum is greater than one, it's, it, it's a kind of, uh, then, then the singularity is a kind of rational singularities. And uh, in this case, uh, we are not interested in today, but and for simply elliptic singularities, so uh, there are only, only three possibilities for the exponents like this. And this one is treated by Lawson, around 1970. And the, and the associated foliation is the first foliation on S5. So afterwards, Thurston came and uh, 
he established his H principle. So we, we just we, we know that on, on S5, because S5 with a number of S5 is of course equal to zero. There are a bunch of foundations, but we enjoy one foundations. But this one is really the first foundation. So we call it Lawson, Lawson foundation, the, the Lawson foundation. And uh, in, the, in, these, in these cases, uh, the link of the singularity is a near manifold. So it's, a to, it's a, also a torus band of uh, the circle, but the monodromy is a unipotent. And uh, if in the, cusp singular, that in the case of cusp singularities, so the monodromy is a, uh, a hyperbolic, and uh, according to PQL, we can indicate the monodromy as uh, the product of these three matrices. And uh, the, it, it is really easy to compute the Milner number of them. It's just, you know, it's a second bet number. So P, P plus Q plus R is a second bet number. So just T plus Q plus R is the Euler number of the Milner fiber. And the, in this case, uh, the minimum resolution is, looks like this. So if the exponent is 237, this is a rational curve with, with a mode. And the other cases like this. But anyway, it's a, it's a cycle of P rational curves intersecting transversely to next, next to next. Okay. And then, so in order to explain the meaning of this strength, uh, this construction. And so let me remind you the strange duality and the relation to the K3 surface, which was established by Pinkham. And uh, so I said, I, I don't talk about the rational singularities, but there they belong to the, from the point of, point of view of the formation of the singularities. Uh, it, they are called the singularities of modality one. Modality is the, uh, the dimension which you need for the Vassar deformation. And uh, so they, they are modality zero. And the, for modality one, so cusp singularities and elliptic singularities, they are of modality one, but there is, I don't know the fine, uh, but there are 14 ex exceptional singularities singularities other than these cusp was simply a big one. And he found a strange duality between these 14, 14 singularities. So here is a uh, the table. And uh, anyway, there are 14 singularities. So labeled by, labeled by these three numbers. It, this, the number indicates the structure of new lattice, so it, it, it is related, it's intersection form. And this Dolgachev number, Dolgachev triple, is, indicates the minimum resolution. And then what he found, and the, the code strange, as a strange directly, what is strange is that, for example, if, if you look at the Gabriel, so Gabriel number for this singularity, so it's so seven, this denotes the structure, this indicates the structure of uh, intersection form of the mineral fiber, while this number indicates the structural resolution. And so this and this, they are the same. So in, in the case of this singularity, so this uh, it happens to that that these two triples, triples perfectly coincide. <laughs> and for example, if you take this one, so Gabriel's number is this, the relative number is this, but if you look, so here two lines below, you uh, you have different singularity, but now, his 
Gabriel is her daughter chief, <coughs> and her daughter chief is his Gabriel. <laughs> That's the strange duality. So, and uh, there are many more features in strange dualities. So many more invariants are really dual to each other between these pairs. And some of them are self-dual. So this is for exceptional singularities. But this, so if you keep the Gabriel number in mind, and then we can extend this list directly to the cusp singularity, PPQR cusp singularity case. And then again, Gabriel's number uh, indicates the Milner lattice. So the, this is a picture for the not extended, but strange duality. But the next picture, uh, yeah. This indicates the structure of uh, Milner lattice. And uh, P prime, Q prime, R prime is the trip, dual triple proof to PQL. And this is the structure of resolution of the cusp singularity. So with the same labeling, there are 14 cusp singularities. And uh, satisfies a similar type of duality. And that is called extended strange duality. And uh, it, it, it was found by Nakamura and Nagoyen. These people also found the deformation from the inner histable surface to KT surfaces. And if I come back to the Pinkham's theorem on the not extended one, but strange duality. So, what he proved is that uh, as I as I showed in the case of uh, four, four, four singularities, uh, for strange duality for exceptional singularities, so you can embed its Milner fiber in Kefri surface, and uh, you can find a complementary divisor and uh, in fact, here, this part, you have uh, intersection form of this linear fiber. And uh, here you find really a dual, dual type intersection. And uh, so in a sense, uh, as a, in a K3 lat lattice, uh, Income interpreted the, the strange duality as the, that this part is, uh, is an orthogonal complement of this new fiber. But now, from this point of view, what we did is not a lattice level or, but uh, as, a, as a space, the K3 surface is decomposed into two paths, two, two minimal fibers with reference vibrations. That is what we, we did. So that's the meaning of this, this construction in K3 surfaces. So the, the reference vibration, most of you know very well, but it, 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 so, so also we have a higher dimensional concept, but uh, in, in this case, uh, so if, if that map from a four manifold to a um, two manifold, we assume that for, for a four manifold, some orientation, and uh, if the map, uh, the, the map is called leftist vibration, if the critical point is uh, isolated and uh, it, it, it is in this form. So uh, if we can, find a local coordinate around this critical point on four manifold and also on the target manifold, as if it is a holomorphic 
most critical point. That's, that's a critical uh, resistance vibration. And this is vibration is, I'm sorry, uh, okay. Yeah. So usually, uh, if, if, as I told you, if, if you have a, if you have a complex surface, and if you have a, for example, uh, same surface like, or a complex surface with convex boundary, if you look for some holomorphic function, usually it gives you a resistance vibration. Otherwise, if, if you part up with a little bit, then you get. So in that case, uh, usually we, we have a boundary on each fibers. But today I, I'm going to, I want to think about the uh, recess vibration with closed fibers. So, so, so we, we, we will construct recess vibration on linear fiber, and linear fiber has the boundary. So we assume that boundary is also fiber, fibers of the circle. And we, we assume that, the, so this delta denotes, uh, I'm sorry. You know, it's the set of uh, critical points, and it must be contained in the interior. So the boundary has no critical points. So boundary, if you have a boundary, torus, uh, torus boundary over the surface uh, over the circle, then what we want to do is to extend that genuine vibration into the interior as a resistance vibration. That is what we want to do. So, and uh, what, what's a good for resistance vibration? And it, it is well known that uh, if you have a symplectic form, and for usually you get uh, by Donaldson theorem, uh, less expensive, and if you go it up, then you get resistance vibration. And you, if you have uh, resistance vibration, so there are, there are some really, really special uh, ex exceptions, but usually we, we get symplectic structure on the form manifold. So, so, so usually uh, if you look for the recess vibration, no? so there are two ways to, two method of constructions. One is, as I told you, uh, look at the holomorphic map. And the other one is, so if you know about the monodromy relation of the desired deficit vibration, then you, you, you really con you can construct from the uh, mono mono monodromy data, and you get, but both methods don't work for, for our purpose because, because our space is already fixed. And in the case of uh, higher genus fibers, so monodromy data and uh, the uh, resulting manifold is really, really almost the same. But uh, in Thomas' case, so because uh, so if you, if you consider the group of the fermions of the torus, the connected component has not to be a topology. It's all to be to torus. But in the higher genus case, it's, 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 it's contractive. It's con connected component is con contractive. That's the difference. But so I want some H principle for the existence or extension of the resistance vibration, but I don't know. And if I don't know how to formulate it. So in higher genus case, it must be a bit poorer. But uh, for Torah's case, I don't know how to formulate this problem in a proper way. But uh, for the equivalence, so if you have a, uh, if we really have a true 
let's just fibrate on the closed surface with closed fiber, cl cl uh, uh, generic fiber uh, torus. And in this case, so if to if the, these two let's just fibrate on are uh, equivalent or not, isomorphic or not. It is really like a, we have a, it's each principle like statement. That is the work by Kass and Modishism and Matsumoto. So Kass and Modishism worked rather in a homomorphic situation and, uh, and Matsumoto generalized it to the smooth case and uh, but so so if we have a uh, vibration with porous fiber, then if if you don't have any critical points, the Euler number is equal to zero. So if you have uh, uh, if you compute the, the Euler number, then it is exactly the number of critical points. If you fix the base space, then the equivalence between two vicious five ratio with storage fiber is just the Euler number, the number of critical points. And uh, it holds because the base surface is closed. The proof is really of spirit of convex integration because uh, so the monodromy of Miller fiber is a uh, uh, recess vibration is uh, a kind of right hand right handed dentist along uh, vanishing cycle so it's not very complicated uh, rather it's, it's simple but once you get a closed surface as a base space it means you have a bar Certainly, a certain number of critical points, and uh, you have a lot of complexity. And then you look for the clever way of uh, taking a simple closed curve to join the singularities to a base point. And uh, is this a light or? Oh, I think you lost the, uh, okay. the device sharing. Okay. Come on. So once you have a uh, vibration of a closed surface, then already it is complicated enough. Then you can look, look for a, a simple closed curves, disjoin simple closed curves to join the critical value to, to the base point, and that, that's a proof. So you, you can look for you can solve a sort of one problem. And uh, that is uh, the proof of Matsumoto. So once you, you have a uh, SS5 ratio, then, so, so we use this theorem to, to, to get carefully surface. And uh, so in the rest of time, I, I I explain a bit about the construction of uh, recess vibration over the, in the uh, neural fiber of such singularities. But sorry, I, I don't think they're, they're seeing it. Uh, I don't know if it's delayed or... No, I don't think you're sharing it. Oh. Wait. I know. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you're not connected. This is okay, but I'm not in the meeting. Yeah, you're not in the meeting anymore. Could you give me? I don't have none. 
Uh, uh, to get the last one, the last meeting is probably like if you click on the on the right arrow. Right. Uh, yeah. Where, where, yeah. Yes. Ah, this one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, then you just press enter. Yes. In my tablet, when you do that, it enters. <laughs> You will probably need the password too. I, I think I can get the password from there. <laughs> okay. Should be able to get the password from here. Maybe this uh, they can put just the screen here. This yes, is, you can just move the camera to the presentation. This is true. This is true. This is true. This is This is true. This is This is true. This is 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 I don't know. It's coming. 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 Okay. Now, can you? Sh we should allow you to share, right? Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, what is it? Make cohort. Oh, is it? Is it, it must be the new one because be. that's the. Yeah, okay. Make cohort. Mm -hmm. Now you should be able to share again. Yes. You probably lost the connection like when it, uh, when, it uh, when it decided to save uh, energy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry for this. <laughs> so, so the idea comes from the how to present the monodromy of the link. So the first idea is uh introduced by Mori and Katsuya and Furukawa maybe more than 10 years ago and uh, it is called absolute value moment map so from s5 to the to simplex we have such kind of really simple map by absolute values of the coordinate. And uh, it, but it is really uh, useful to describe uh, singularity as uh, a link of the singularity in order to embed as a contact submanifold in S5. And uh, we knew that, so 
so we mimic the construction slightly in, into this way. So from C3, not only from a single mineral fiber, but we construct a map from C3 to C by defining in the following way. So take those again a square of the, the absolute value of x, y, z, but for y and z, we put omega and omega square. Omega is a cubic root of one. So this map is, looks very nice and uh, it's really a useful map. And then we restrict them to each neural fibers. But if it works perfectly, then, then there's no problem. But there are two, two points to overcome. And uh, if you use this map, so the critical points are really, really as desired. And, uh, but not exactly your Lucius type. So it's slightly different from uh, 2Z is really different from uh, real reset type singularity. And uh, also we have to control the boundary, but it, it is not so difficult. So the main problem is, is this one. So the critical point is slightly different from Lucius five. And uh, so, and why, why, why did you choose this map? So, what was the motivation for such a map? Because then, first, th this looks like this is really close to the moment map of this type. I'm sorry, <clears throat> moment map of this type. So, certainly, it, it defines the same vibration on the boundary. So, that, that is first point. And then the second point is that, yes, it gives exactly good critical points. The, po the position of the critical point is really, really as desired. So we, 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 we think it must be this map. But uh, unfortunately, something is slightly wrong. And, uh, but uh, anyway, we have a really nice position of critical points. And then we have two constructions. One is more complicated. The result is weaker, so it, it looks bad. But, <laughs> but I, I think this, this can be applied to, to other cases. And, uh, and the other one is, <laughs> so to the contrary, yeah, yeah, more sim simpler and stronger. So <laughs> for, for the moment, it looks very nice. But if, if I explain the first one, the, the last one, so we, we have to deform the map, which I defined, in you know, order to make it, the, modify the critical point into real, we have the set type for a critical point. And here, here is some issue in that direction. So just look at the two jet. Then if the two jet, it's a, it's a quadrat homogeneous quadratic map from the R4 to R2. And if the critical point is isolated, then it, is, it can be deformed to left set type critical point or the one which the orientation is in reversed. So, and uh, in fact, the space of such two jet has only two components depending on the chirality, the orientation. That is one issue. So this, this statement is really applicable to, to establish some, some H kind, is H principle type uh, theorem for general case, I think. And the controlling the boundary is not, not, not big issue, so I skip this one. And the second construction is, 
So instead of deforming the map itself, we deform the linear fibers. So we deform, actually, we deform the defining equation of linear fibers or singularities. So how to do it? So it's we, we, we deform the so this this is the, the polynomial which defines the uh, singularity and uh, what we do is so look at this uh, two simplex so this is so we consider the ratio of x y and z the, the absolute value of the ratio of absolute values. So if all of three are reasonably away from zero, we, we take just this fourth term. We, 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 we forget about the three terms. And uh, even if one is equal to zero, it is, it is still we take still this one and and if we have two two coordinates which are relatively really close to zero then we respect the third coordinate which is away from zero and for example if y and z are really close to zero we take this polynomial and we can deform the defining polynomial in this way, in a single function. And then, miraculously, this deformation really works. And uh, what we get is a deformation from the horizontal polynomial to such functions, keeping that always the fiber is simply. The, the, the fiber in, the, in this case, the fiber means that uh, it's a linear fiber and deform the deform into some <laughs> subspace, uh, subspace, but always it, it is symplectic. So I def I deform the defining equation, but the the submanual which is defined by the deformation with the this defining equation is always symplectic. We can do that. And uh, at the final stage, and if you look at the really the fiber of the, that map, then every fiber is Lagrangian. And clearly we can see only one fiber, regular fiber, which is uh, exactly Lagrangian. That's that's a construction, and uh, the good thing about this construction is that because we have uh, the final stage, we have uh, the Lagrangian vibration. It, it it is considered as a, a complete integrable system, and the critical point is already really classified by Eliasson, and uh, using his Result, it is easy to see that our critical point is really all this is type. That is one, one good point. So by deforming the defining equation of linear fibers, so we, we don't have to check that the critical point is really of this type. And the during the deformation, we can keep the surfaces always symplectic. So if Lieback and Kai and Yasha's H prince for view the homotopy. I think it, it works. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I think uh, I don't. We don't have need, we don't need the full power of this H principle, but the uh, linear version is enough for. So uh, even though we deformed it, always it, it's a simplex sub manifold, 
And uh, somehow the, the boundaries, so we have to control the boundary in some sense, but uh, at the final stage, the, the surface is, again, the mineral fiber is, is things like this. So here, in some part, you have a complicated topology, but away from certain part, then it's a product. I mean, it's a conic structure. So it's a, it's a simplectization of some conduct manifold, three manifold. So if you have original mineral fiber, here is a core part and here is some uh, uh, product part. Then the, the, resulting, the resulting manifold is, has the same core part and the boundary is some, somewhere between the product part. So we can say that in that sense, this is also a, a symplectically a mineral fiber. So it, it, the boundary is complex again. And, uh, but in this case, the, the, the resistive vibration that we got is a Lagrangian vibration against this symplectic structure. So if you forget about this symplectic structure and look at the resistive vibration, and you can construct a symplectic stru structure again from the resistive vibration in such a way that each fiber is symplectic. Then you get really different symplectic structure on the mineral fiber, which is a translation invariant on the boundary. So, they, so if you can, if you have two of them and which glues up, then really we can extend the symplectic structure as a cross manifold. So, so is this two symplectic structure uh, different on the boundary, like context structure on the boundary different? Right, so, so, so the symplectic structure is really different from the, which is uh, the mineral fiber or, or it has. Okay, the boundary also. Boundary? The boundary have different context structure, like ah, yes, 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 yeah, that, that, uh, there are a couple of ways to explain it because, so we have an also flow. And uh, so, so the, the, the boundary carries a so-called Vicon contact structure. And if you take the product with interval, then you have a convex structure, convex. But, but I, so in the case of, in a way, huge surface, we take, it, but in the other way, so concave we take. Therefore, <clears throat> this can be filled from outside. But now, still, we, we, we take the intermediate one, and still the third symplectic structure. Now, the boundary is really not convex, not concave. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, Co-symplectic, some people say, for, for, the, for the boundary. So for some people say is uses such kind of terms. And uh, because uh, the fiber, the fiber is symplectic. So it, it really close to, uh, so, so if you, Finally, if you get a uh, symplectic structure on the four month, oops, oh, it's too late. <laughs> Not a million. No, but, but, but it, it's almost done, but. The, uh, the the presentation. So much simpler. Oh, well, yeah, but uh, there's, we don't have the, the technical person with us, so we would have to experiment on how to turn the camera. No, we do. We don't have. Oh, OK. Oh, but, but, okay. Yeah. Great, so, thanks. Uh, can't on anymore, but it's there. OK. I think this is OK. So 
Uh, okay. Yes. So if you get finally a K3 surface, then uh, so we have a uh, so I have to say that uh, something about this. So we have two million fibers which grew together to get K3 surface with uh, uh, some some close four manifold. But uh, as I told you, thanks to the cast Moishes on Matsumoto theory, so it's a left is vibration over a sphere. And uh, the number of critical points is exactly 24. <laughs> that assures that it's really a smooth K3. And also, you can, you can take, from the first, you can take some empty K3 surface. Then it is this. With regarding the vibration structure. But uh, you, you have to choose a clever way to divide the uh, critical locus into two parts on the, by a simple closed curve. That is what we did from a topological point of view. So uh, from that point of view, uh, each fiber is really a holomorphic elliptic curve. And the symplectic structure is, so, so, so the, the inverse image of this com complicated but simple closed curve is, of course, uh, I'm sorry, of course, a uh, Levy flat one. So we, we each, each elliptic curves are, of course, homomorphic ones and symplectic ones. So the simplex structure that I constructed is that kind. So that is what I want to explain. So thank you very much. Uh, I think it's it's too early to celebrate. Yes, yes, but no, no, no. Yeah, I'm not a good girl. It's much too early. It's more, more than a month to go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> okay. Any questions? What's the last point I wanted to ask? So, so when you start with this elliptic vibration, which is quite critical uh, uh, value. So, 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 uh, so can you what happens? So can you take any uh, any division of the critical points into two uh, two <laughs> sets? But you're not always getting Milner fibers, right? If you if you separate the, the critical points from the from holomorphic point of view, no. I think it is really difficult so because it's the the boundary is really really flat so the complex structure is really different from the mid the original middle fiber but uh, you can find such example but from the really known well known uh fibrillation if you so in some cases if you start from kuma surface and the uh, if you take spe uh, special elliptic vibration, you, you know the how the monotony of each critical locus is. And uh, we can find a way to <laughs> divide them into. We are, we are in some cases, we can do that. And uh, 237 or 444, we can realize it. But not for all of them. Not yet. <laughs> I'm not sure. But we, maybe we can do that. Uh, we can we can find maybe I, I don't remember the eight or fourteen. So we we have fourteen singularities, but uh, uh, as I remember, six or eight uh, we, we we can find. <laughs> do, do do you think there's any kind of generalization of this to high dimensions? 
that's so I think it's really difficult. Yeah, I think it's really difficult. So because uh, so the one reason is that if you go up higher, so the link is simply connected. So it, it's really difficult to find a simple, good symplectic structure on the boundary. So that is one reason for the difficulty in the higher dimension and also to control the resistance vibration. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I think for the moment this is really special to dimension four. Maybe, of course, not such a general result, but maybe some special cases, maybe. That's a good question. If you come back to the construction of simple foundations, even S on S7, we don't know the existence. So a lot of people are really trying hard for, for recent 10 years, but uh, still we don't know if it is, exists or not. And uh, apart from the simple deforestation, but uh, if we can modify the, some complex structure or simple structure into this, this type, so, so if, if we can modify the simple structure, convex simple structure into translation invariant ones. I think it's very, it, in some cases, it is possible. Uh, that I know, but uh, as uh, I, I don't know, it really works for really so many cases. And, uh, and uh, in fact, okay. usually it is difficult for staying surface, staying mindful. Yeah. I'm there sure. actually seems to be a lot of issues with um, S7 in like different fields. Could you like elaborate why S7 and also S8? Would that play a role in terms of like even and odd powers? S8 because <laughs> uh, we need a sphere of all dimensions. Uh, S7 and S8. Well, it, it seems like a lot of fields like S6 works. Like physics, there's a lot of examples where you can only do up to S six certain things, and then S seven fails. So does it come from like symplectic topology? And the question is also like, if you try to go to S eight, what happens? Like, would it be easier? Like, would so 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 so, so in that in that sense, it's a four dimensional. Uh, I'm sorry, eight dimensional symplectic structure. Do you mean? I mean just in general, like you mentioned S seven. Like there are difficulties extending it to S7. So what are some of the problems with it? And what if you go to S8 or S9? It doesn't matter. Like if you try to generalize it, like why is seven? S7 is much bigger than five. <laughs> <laughs> so so if we so if we stick to the dimension seven, S1 times S6 is already difficult enough. <laughs> It, it must be much easier than a seven, but uh, still, still we don't know any, any results. But then could you generalize it to S9 if you're looking only at odd exponents or would that be like additional problems or would S7 imply that also S9 and S11 would be partially solvable as well? Oh. <laughs> Maybe we can let, let let me, that discussion. For let me try a historical yeah. answer to that question. Yes. Exactly 50 years ago, at the Institute, John Milner had on his blackboard a list of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and he had a, a check mark and a name for the person who produced a foliation of that dimension on S7. And then 49 years ago, of course, Thurston came and filled out the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, S7 was not in the list of Wilson. <laughs> okay. We should uh, stop here and thank Yoshi again.